In 1990, the Inner London Education Authority was abolished and Lewisham took over locally. In the first year, they overspent and must make cuts of £10 million. Pounds. Nobody ever going to, at any time, got to question the confidence of these people. Away from the town hall, school governors and teachers reacted with horror to the news and demanded resignations. Lewisham schools received their resource packages telling them what cuts there will be. Well, thank you. I only hope when I open it up, it's going to be magnificent and not anything to frighten me. This school, I can only talk about the last 20 years, but we never had any financial difficulty before. Never. In fact, uh, we are very concerned that perhaps the council do not understand what it goes on in schools and what the effect of these cuts will be. The decision has been that the 150 girls who are coming in the first year who we would have normally wanted to timetable in six teaching groups of 25 um, will now be timetabled in five teaching groups of 30 given the staff that we're likely to have in September. The staff have been very cooperative in uh, in supporting in this, but they certainly don't regard it as a good thing. Um, they are appalled by the idea of having to teach classes of 30. If the situation gets any worse than I have catered for at the moment, I sincerely doubt whether I would be able to cope with it. It would become unmanageable. There's such an element of wizardry in, in producing a document like this at all that uh, I think is marvellous that uh, it can be flexible enough to take account of the, the latest catastrophes. But well, Chair, we it's can't. It's a bit like that still. Uh, yeah. The fact is that the latest catastrophe is beyond anything. On the, the 31st of March, this school had in hand £21,782. Don't bother about it, dear friends. Because that was not spent, it was clawed back by the authority. So we made our contribution to Lewisham's uh, difficulties. And here we are on the 6th of June, facing the fact that we can't possibly manage uh, our finances because of mistaken uh, financial statements <coughs> that have been made to us. Talk about goalposts being removed. And I've been trying to get through to the department concerned and discovered that one, the poor colleague, I, I mean, I've, I'm nothing against the poor people who are trying to work this out, but she has gone on holiday for a fortnight and the number was unobtainable yesterday. I, I mean, people who are a little less experienced than I am might be a little bit daunted and a little bit depressed by this. It is a modest overspend, given the magnitude of what we've done and there was going to be that margin of error. What never happened here was that Lewisham was never in a position to have a contingency to deal with that because of the financial pressures it's been under and the poll tax capping. And if it had happened five years ago or ten years ago, there wouldn't be any of this hype around this overspend. It would just, we would have been able to take the time to put the systems right. Now can I ask you, who do you hold responsible for the expenditure? A funny question, but do you hold the head teacher responsible for teaching staff and support staff expenditure in the school, or is there someone at the centre? There's a debate it. about that. <laughs> there is a big debate about that. It's actually proved extremely difficult to hold the head teacher responsible, which is obviously what you should do because the head teachers have not had accurate financial information this year. Special school transport. Oh. I hate doing this to you, but as I keep probing those up, yeah. I'm getting a little bit more of the jigsaw puzzle. Presumably, this is the um, hire of taxis, etc., and escorts. It's, it's the buses. The transport is run by the DLO. Not for long. Um, and the nature of the contract is such that we seem to have no control over what they charge us. And also, if we reduce our level of activity, it doesn't make any difference to their overall charge. I mean, it's just appalling.
Jennifer. No, it's not. Yes, it came from all of us. How many letters did you get today? Ten. Ten. Your friends. No, my my sister. Your sister. Have fun. Okay. Bye, okay. We've got certain sort of statutory responsibilities. If we actually felt that the council's financial situation was such that uh, we needed to take, you know, warn the council and including things like stopping unlawful expenditure because the budget is, isn't balanced, etc., that would be a real crisis. It would also, this Labour Council, if they don't, if they really, if things do start collapsing, could easily lose the next election. And we were also conscious that a number of members, including the leader, uh, seem to think that the general election will lead to the cavalry coming over the hill, which is why we thought you, when you came in you might be the cavalry. <laughs> That's the money. But, um, is the teacher salary budget about half your budget? Is it roughly? Yeah, 50%. 50%. 50%. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Um, Judith said that there was a lot of fat in the Ilya budget and that we could, and I believe there was knowing Ilya, and that we could easily accommodate the loss of five million out of that budget. And I, I was absolutely happy with that. I'm not making any negative points about it because I didn't believe the earlier figures. I thought they'd be far too high. But I think now on reflection, they were probably more accurate than we thought. Um, the P&R budget report of March 1991 predicted a half a million overspend. Um, and then on the 7th of May, I was advised that there was an overspend of approximately five million. We are talking very, very, very big numbers. It is possible that come July you will be faced with making additional cuts because of the problems in education. And I do want to say something about that. As far as I'm concerned as a person and as a member of this team, I am not batting that particular wicket. I'm perfectly prepared to contain these cuts within the education budget. But I don't have a great deal of confidence that the members will adopt the strategy that I'm telling them to adopt. Someone at the end of the day has got to make that <coughs> crunch decision about a value judgment between something in education, something in leisure, environmental services. 
Is it going to be one of Ken's libraries or leisure centres versus my consumer services, Julian's, John's, Leach's or whatever? And, and all the time, we and members are actually shying away from making that decision. And as long as that decision isn't made, we can't operate properly as a team. <coughs> Given that we're making a decision on the resourcing levels of teachers this evening, that if we were going to give them an opportunity, then this was the, uh, the only real opportunity we had. They began the lobbying before, before there was an institutional labour group. What they're attending is a chair's meeting, which precedes the meeting of the labour group. Is that correct? I'm happy to, uh, to call it whatever we will. In, in, in the, in the, well, you, can't have, you can't have council officers which is what head teachers are, attending a, uh, you know, a, as a deputation, attending a meeting of a Labour group. It's absolutely extraordinary, I think. But it's still, I mean, maybe I'm old-fashioned, but I, I just find that the, the, I just find that all the old-fashioned boundaries between members and officers and political groupings and professional groupings not, are being totally uh, ignored and overrun. They're not actually saying for any of the subsequent debate. I, I don't find it extraordinary, but I'm, I'm happy to listen to other people's views. Martin, you know. There's many other interests that we're going to be looking at cutting tonight who don't have a deputation, and it's quite an interesting precedent, you know, as to who can have deputations to us, and I think there's an issue there, but I think you can't really stop them coming tonight. Or no, I agree, they've obviously been invited. I mean, of course you can't stop them, but I'm just saying that absolutely, I mean, why shouldn't the school keeper send a deputation? Why shouldn't that art education send a deputation? After all, we've got a piece of paper somewhere here which has got some indications for art education. Do you know what I mean? I mean, where, where do you stop on, on, on this business? And that's why it's better not to have any, to be perfectly honest. Uh, otherwise, you know, you're, you're being unfair to somebody. I mean, why, why are the heads specially privileged, as against all the other people who are involved in this budgetary process? Well, they've been invited particularly around the issue of the resourcing exercise, but I understand what you're saying. Um, they are a group of our key managers, and um, I think in the interests of our evolving relation with them as managers, and we, we all have different views on that, I think it would be helpful if we did listen to them. In my view, in my particular school, you could not take any more out, having gone round the staff cuts that we've already done a, few, a week or so ago. If you take more out of that, I really do not know how I, can, I could mount the curriculum for next year. As a result, I think, of the discussion we've had tonight, the decisions around the resourcing does include looking at the uh, proposals as to whether we accept or bury them on primary and support staff, and also, I think, capitation. If we went on as we are, what would the overspend be likely to be this year? I mean, presumably, again, somewhere, somewhere around five million. Because out of our budget, teachers' salaries are 55 million, we, we have to attend to, we have to do something about it. There must be a serious discussion in this year about our commitment to education. Confidence in us is at the lowest effort it has been for a very long time. And we, we've got to deal with this issue properly. Well, I, I think I'd better put it to us anyway. Are we agreed? Thank you very much. Are we agreed or not? Can I still press you down? Know? Just try and get your standing committee. And there's a special government meeting, Sergio. Anybody wants to contribute? Good question. The last six weeks, during which time I was chair of the committee, especially after getting out of hospital, was a bit difficult. I was fed a continual set of rumours. I'm not suggesting you all fell victim to them, but I mean, by God, the stuff that was coming out at me. And they, obviously there were people who were concerned to stir it, and the people who were most concerned to stir it were, uh, were their councillors. Um, but they must, have been some, they must have been talking to some people to get these rumours about how the elections had been decided, it was all clear who was going to win, people were taking bets. Um, some people were going to resign if I was re-elected, some officers were going to resign, there was clearly a crisis in confidence, etc., etc. The reason I won 
was because there are an awful lot of people in Labour Group who, whether they like it or not, acknowledge the fact that they could lose two, mar two marginal constituencies if they blow education. And it therefore is, in its crudest political terms, extremely important. For, for those who thought it wasn't helping the service to have to have me there because um, weren't there delays and we were creating problems and so on, um, I have gone native and I've become a defender of the education service. But I also have uh, balancing needs, and if we're going to win the political process, then we actually have to acknowledge uh, that there are other there are corporate <coughs> concerns. I think education is one of the most important of them. I don't think it's the most important of them. Um, but I've got, if I, I can't persuade others unless we acknowledge that uh, there are other concerns which are equally important. Yes, I'm aware yes, of the Yes, I bet feeling. you are. Yes. You've got to give me time. You've got to give me time to change the group's mind. This is yeah. right. Yeah. Right at the school. Right at the school. So close. Then another thing the Guardian was saying that people here. Excuse me. Okay. Well, I'll tell you one good thing about being deficit leader. Everybody mail's gone down. Yes, well, no, this, this is just three, that three or four we, days. I used to get that's what we were going to talk about, because I wanted to work out what was going to happen to the mayor while I was on holiday. <laughs> well, what is going to happen to her? Do I? I do not need all the letters saying what a bastard I am. <laughs> <laughs> so you've oh, I know, yes, you'll reply, so yes, I agree, won't you? Yeah. yeah. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Can you hear me? We cannot fit you all in the meeting, so we organize for representatives of the groups who are here to come in and talk to us. I mean, that's what's happening. Nobody's being allowed in. You see, seven o'clock in the microphone. Nick, can you ask? Yes. See that I know I'm trying to help them. Well, you stop to get a ticket. All right, okay. Oh, 
My decision is that we abandon the committee meeting and that we attempt to tell these people out there the committee meeting will not take place because we're not prepared to risk their and safety and the safety of staff yeah. and that we seek a venue yeah. next week at which we and can we get want, we want a committee meeting with public, the public people now, yeah. I think that's going to that's cause more, more, problems, problems, more, problems, problems, more problems, problems than you I mean, can parents, groups and teachers have been organising for days for this if you, if you postpone it then the doors will come through because they're just going to surge it I'm not bringing no one I'm not bringing no one not Stephen don't look at it that way I'm stating that the doors will come through listen Chatting in the argument is not going to make change any difference at the moment, okay? And that's, that's the reason why the thing's going to be abandoned, because they know they won't be able to get the meeting no, done. The well, the, the solution to the problem is, is the people standing there by the door and the safety of other people out there, including children, that have been placed at the front of the door. With all due respect, Constable, why didn't you stop the two of us when we were talking about when these two lads were talking, suddenly you stopped them. The leader of the council was actually listening to them. I said the same thing. It's, it's, it's through these to get the people trying to get through this. Should we make one attempt to say if people move back? I think we should. And, and we say we will call off the meeting if people don't move back to let the yellow ticket through. Let's give it three minutes, eh? This meeting cannot take place. It will be rearranged for next week at a venue which can accommodate a much larger number of members of the public and concerned individuals. Is that a correct position, Terry? Yes, absolutely. The police are quite clear about it. Uh, we, ha we must uh, try and clear the crowd from outside and stop them from pressing against the glass doors. And the only way we can do that is by saying that the meeting is abandoned and encouraging them to go away. From my point of view, what happened last night and what you're telling me about the events leading up to it are, as Terry was saying, bring the council into disrepute. Um, and that's really what we're here to talk about. We're in that situation and there's people actually physically possibly being squashed and the danger of a surge at any moment. And it was very like Hills, you know, the Hillsborough type of situation, plate glass windows that could break at any time, those you know, could be put everywhere. And, I've got ultimate responsibility, because I'm actually legally responsible, I mean, I'm the head of the paid service, if I'm not there, Bob's responsible because he's the deputy, uh, managerially we've got individual responsibilities, statutory responsibilities of health and safety of our staff, and of course I think the public in this situation as well. I just want it understood by members we've got the authority, so we don't have a chair trying to actually delay things. My worry was that while we were arguing, something could have happened. I, I quite agree. What confuses this issue? Uh, is people, okay, it's Mallory in this case, but he, he's not alone, there are others who uh, abuse, and I use the word advisory, abuse their position and the relative authority of being chair of the committee to uh, imagine that they can just give whatever orders they like. If Jim is deliberately attempting to derail the process which the group has agreed, corporately, collectively, then I think we need to go back to them fairly soon and make that plain, and he can, uh, clearly he can, he can have to be reined in by them. Terry, could you get the press people to, to, to give us daily press cuts for the foreseeable future? Because I don't read many papers these days, and uh, I suspect that, actually I'm not sure I well, That was one of the traits of uh, the former Prime Minister when they finally realised she was on her way out when she stopped reading the papers. I so just don't get round to them. <laughs> Are people happy with the cameras here? I'll just clear that. Are people happy with the cameras here? Well, I don't know. I mean, I must admit I'm getting, as the, as the weeks have progressed, found the cameras more and more difficult to cope with. But, uh, yeah, okay. Nobody else has any qualms today.
My only brief comments on last night are I found the letter that went out inviting all heads of all chairs of governors and all heads absolutely extraordinary. I, I, it took my breath away when I saw it. My wife said it will be a shambles, you know, which it was clearly going to be. Now, given and why it was going to be a shambles, because there's going to be vast numbers of people there, the fact that there were so few police there I thought was extraordinary. What really concerned me was on the way in, I passed two people in wheelchairs who were on the way out through the crowd who were in real danger of being jostled. I don't think the lobby was down to the fact that letters had been sent out by the chair asking for people to speak to him. That lobby, I think, and the size of that lobby would have been there anyway because what it reflects is the strength of feeling about the service and the anxiety over the cuts that we are, we are proposing to make. And it's not going to go away. And I really resent the remarks that are made that because there's four or five hundred people out on the steps that somehow they've been whipped up by some kind of rabble-rousing minority into doing, into, into actually protesting in, over a service that they passionately believe in and we're all supposed to believe in at the same time. The council's public image um, is being affected by what's happening and I have confirmed to officers but it is not members place to overrule them in the light of what happened last night there has to be clarity if such events recur basically the chief executive deals with the situation that is in fact his legal obligations and if something had gone wrong he would have been the one who actually would have carried the can for it we are now duty bound to organize a properly managed lobbying meeting and that we do it in a constructive way. You spread out the lobby over a protracted time period so that you have genuine dialogue. You don't have people hammering at the doors, you're not counting the numbers, you're actually talking and listening with people. And I think we are now on a bound to do that. I have, I have to say that really concurs actually with my own perception of the of uh, the public image side of it anyway and after last night uh, I would not want to hold any of the subsequent uh, committee meetings in, in a way which would uh, invite that kind of uh, that kind of protest. And if I can first of all draw your attention to the issues that members need to, to consider in developing a budget strategy. Firstly, the need to compensate for the 4.9 million overspend. Secondly, the need to specifically identify those parts of the education budget that are still overspending in 1991 the combined effect of, of the anticipated overspend this year and last year's overspend is 11.8 million on, on the worst scenario. What we therefore have suggested is, is a package of 10 million, given that that will be a part year effect this year, with a full year, an ongoing full year effect in 92-93, we think that can encompass uh, anticipated reductions which may have to be made in 92-93. The proposals we will be putting forward, make no bones about it, will be quite horrific and they will go to group and I hope our debate will not be my god we couldn't face the public with these cuts it's because the it's the group that's got a you know the whole of the council faces the public with those cuts not not just us they don't understand the strength of feeling about education and they don't understand the strength of feeling about people facing the sack. Anyway, I've got to go, Mum. Give my love to Daddy. I will still be alive tonight, I'm sure. Oh, they're all right. The person's all right. They'll sort it out. Yeah. No, tell him to say another mass. All right then, bye. My um, brother's a priest and my mother's just told me that he's been saying a mass for me, so... And li he lit four candles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm glad to have a voice this afternoon on behalf of all the parents here. 
We do want to make our voices heard and our concerns felt about the cuts and how they're affecting our children. Well, I'm Andrew Lee from Mark Gunn School and I want to tell you about the play centre cuts. If, pe if the council cut the play centres, then more children will be out on the streets getting into trouble. This council has shot itself in the foot. This rally and demonstration today bringing parents, teachers, children, all together, the real forces in education, is a fantastic thing in response to their incompetence and the cuts that they have implemented. One of the things that I will want to see is the Central Finance Subcommittee um, with a key role in monitoring mm. education's budget during the rest of the year because once we've established that education's budget is so big <coughs> it affects corporate finances then corporately we will want to monitor that. The other thing is that the members in education have got to back off and give the management of that department the room to actually do their job. But are you, are you mincing your words here because of the cameras? Well, I don't think I was mincing them. Because um, I don't see the committee as being the problem. You see, what, the other way? No, the chair is the problem. Oh. So the chair is the one that's actually in staff's offices and going through their drawers. Which, which is what I'm talking about. And, mm -hmm. and what I am saying is that part of sorting this out is that that... I mean, I, I, I don't know about the specifics, but... No, clearly, what is, the information. what is happening is interfering with the good management of that service yeah. and that in order to clear that up, starting with the director and working down, those managers need to be given the same responsibility stroke freedom that we would expect managers to have anywhere in the council service and that I will make it clear that I intend if I, if need be, to, to become personally involved in order to establish that that is happening. Um, if it does start allowing managers to actually manage their departments, it would be the first time. Where are they, Pat? They're up in the corner. Person, or do you no, want we to have a spokes team. A spokes team. Should we just, do you want to sit down? Should we sit no, we oh, you probably need to sit down. No, we're okay. Okay, we're all right. Hi, Hi, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Surviving. Um, first thing to say is I, I don't know anything about this, so perhaps you better, you better tell us. Well, we represent the Children and Parents Need Play Centres for the Spain in Lewisham. And, um, and we've been on a march and we've lobbied and we what we want to do is have a meeting with Steve Bullock, leader of the council, to discuss um, our demands on play centres with him. Steve's not available. I'm Jim Mallory, I'm the chair of the education committee. Well, well what we'd like to do is actually fix up a date when we can have a meeting and we'd like, we'd like it put in writing that we will have that meeting. Because as, as parents who use play centres and our children, we don't have any representation to speak to anybody. In schools we have our parent governors, we have nothing but ourselves. And it is really tragic that two play centres have been cut already. If, if you fix a date with me, would that be sufficient for starters and I can speak to Steve? No, so. really, no. We really don't feel we're going to get anywhere talking to people from the Education Committee. We've all written letters mm -hmm. and we think it's really the whole thing about the education cuts has gone beyond the education department. My real problem is that I cannot give you a date that Steve Bullock could come to and I, I think the best bet what that I can... Steve Bullock give us a date? Because he is not available. Can you ring him up? We're quite willing to sleep here until he agrees to meet us. Is that his office? Yeah. That's his office. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, so we gathered. Why should I? Is it? Yeah. It's in a house. I'm going to just come out of there. Where is it here? What? In the library. Preschool playgroup. Who's who's sitting in there? Some depth of preschool playgroups. I think that's blackmail. Uh, I'm not prepared to accede to it. Um, and if, if I agree to that, then the entire education cuts package, um, I will have to meet with people or they will occupy our buildings. Um, I, I, I would be more than happy to consider a request for a meeting, um, but not on the basis that if I don't agree to it, they won't leave. I couldn't set that kind of precedent, because I'll drop us all in it if I do. Yeah, okay, right. Cheers, Jim. Bye. Want to meet me, I won't, won't go home unless they meet me. Um, well, I, I can't agree to that. No, not with a force like that. And they'd, they'd ask for a meeting with you, that's different. How long do they intend to do that? How long do they intend to stay there? Eh? Oh, right. It's well, uh, 8 o'clock to me. I right, we can provide them with creature comforts. <laughs> That's my husband, nothing. Um, they've gone over there. Sorry, there's enough. Wait a minute. I'm just going to see Bob and the leader. I wouldn't wait till they come back. I'm going to go over there. The leader's already given this view. What's the address Jim Murray said to them? I don't know. We don't know. We weren't done. I don't know. <coughs> you know what he said. Should you be done? They've been perfectly reasonable, and not in any way antagonistic. Oh. Cause mm. What they're going to do? Well, they can't spend. Should be losing. Should be elected tomorrow. They got the police. Uh, they have to get the police to remove the media. And it's not. You know, the media will be onto it tomorrow, won't they? Well, I think the media will be here tonight anyway. They seem to have got themselves well organised. Yeah. We want to go in. We're closed. Next week we find out who gets to the top of the housing list and how they get there. We've still got almost 17,000 people still waiting, so most people won't get in off there. And the sit-in turns sour. Move! Move! Out! Out!